Now we're up in the shack for today's video. We're going to take a look at the question, can I use an antenna switch or a coax switch in reverse? Meaning that can I use this to switch one antenna to multiple rigs? Now the short answer to that question is yes, you can in most cases. But let's investigate a little bit further. Now the majority of these switches uh, will switch the unused port to ground. So if I switch this to one, it's going to connect my common to port number one but then port number two is going to be shorted to ground and then vice versa when I switch this to position two this port is switched to ground. So that's going to give you some measure of isolation. And most switches, uh, especially think, you know, quality switches like this Alpha Delta and even this uh, MFJ that I held up here earlier, uh, they'll generally have a specification for the amount of isolation that they'll provide uh, when you're switched in one path. Uh, the isolation spec is how much of that signal will leak into the third path. So take a look uh, for that specification. But uh, in the meantime, let's just take a look at the numbers and see how much isolation we really need. Now, In order to get an idea of the maximum input power to a receiver, I kind of went to the expert, uh, Rob Sherwood, and uh, he said that uh, every transceiver he's ever looked at can very safely take a plus 20 dBm input. So that's 100 milliwatts. Another way to think about that is that's 93 dB over S9. Remember, S9 is minus 73 dB. So a plus 20 dBm input, or 100 milliwatt input, would be 93 dB over S9. So well, that sounds like an awful lot of power. But he said that's safe for every transceiver he's ever looked at. Let's just be a little extra cautious and drop another 10 dB, another order of magnitude. So we'll drop that down to 10 milliwatts instead of 100. That's plus 10 dBm. And that would be 83 dB over S9. Now if you look at the S meter on your rig, it may go up to S9 plus 40 or S9 plus 60 or something like that. So this is even beyond full scale of the S meter on your, your radio. It is perfectly safe in terms of you know, not doing any damage to the receiver. Now to get an idea for the numbers, 100 watts, uh, like a 100 watt HF rig, is plus 50 dBm and a legal limit here in the US of 1500 watts is plus 62 dBm. So let's keep those numbers in mind and see how much isolation we need. Okay, so let's say I'm going to have a 100 watt rig on the switch and the safe input power to the rig that's being switched out of line is plus 10 dBm. That tells me I, the isolation needed by the switch is 40 dB. And uh, even in the case of I'm running legal limit, 1500 watts, okay, that's plus 61.76 dBms, or, or about plus 62 dBm. And again, that safe input power of plus 10 dBm says that the switch needs to give me at least 51.76 uh, dB of isolation. Now, most of these coax switches are rated to have isolation of 60 dB or better. And uh, usually that's going to be rated over a given frequency range. The isolation is typically the least or the smallest at the highest rated frequency for the switch. So while a switch might have a rating of plus 60 d or 60 dB at say 150 megahertz, you get down to 7 megahertz, and it might be another 20 or 30 dB better than that. So, but if in doubt, test. So let's go do that. So now one way to test this is to use a nano VNA and measure S21 or the insertion loss. So I've got uh, my Nano VNA hooked up to the switch, to uh, the common port and port number one, and I've terminated port number two. I've adjusted the stimulus frequency on the Nano VNA from 1 MHz to 151 MHz, so I have a 150 MHz span. And we've calibrated uh, properly over that frequency range, so we're all uh, good to go to make the measurement. Okay, with the switch in position one, we're essentially measuring the insertion loss, and we can see here, if we move this marker, uh, say all the way to 150 megahertz, we're looking at about two tenths of a dB of an insertion loss, and I bet that's actually more due to my little SMA cables than it is to the switch itself. So now let's move the switch to position two. So now the switch is in position two, meaning my source coming from the VNA is going right into the 50 ohm termination that is on port number two and we're measuring how much of that signal is leaking to port number one and that's what we're measuring here. So we can see you know, it does, the isolation gets worse as we get higher and higher in frequency and again if we move my cursor all the way up to the end here at 151 megahertz 
We've got 70 dB, 69.1 dB of isolation at 150 megahertz. So that's you know certainly well above the 40 or 50 dB that we would need in order to be safe into the radio. Now of course that's at 150 megahertz, which is probably the top end for that switch. If I come down into the HF band here, let's go down to let's we'll see, there's 28 megahertz, so that's the uh, the 10 meter band. I've got 82, almost 83 dB of isolation there, so plenty of margin. And I do a lot of my operating down on the lower portion of HF, down around uh, you know the 40 meter band and things like that. Let's move this over to there's eight and a half megahertz. Let's move it down a little bit more, five and a half megahertz. Yeah, let's see if I can get there. There's seven megahertz, so that's right at the bottom of the 40 meter band. I'm showing better than 90 dB of isolation, and that's actually probably pretty close to the measurement limit of this VNA. Well, just to get an idea of that, I'm going to simply disconnect um, my uh, source here uh, from port one, and we can see that uh, you know, those numbers are down around minus 100, minus 97, minus 98 uh, dB of uh, isolation just inherent into the nano VNA. So we're really close to that, the bottom of that noise floor, the measurable noise floor, uh, in looking at isolation at the lower portion of the HF band. Next we'll take a look at this MFJ1702B relatively inexpensive uh, two-port coaxial switch. Again, uh, the insertion loss uh, at 150 megahertz, a uh, little more than two-tenths of a dB, so just a little bit worse than the alpha delta. Now let's switch it to the isolation position here and let's see where we are. So at 150 megahertz uh, we're sitting uh, about 60 dB down and if we move that uh, that cursor down to the low portion of the HF band again kind of where I operate down there at, at around uh, 7 megahertz we're about 75 dB of isolation so certainly the Alpha Delta provides you know a, another you know nearly 20 dB of isolation more than this MFJ does but even at 75 dB of isolation this inexpensive MFJ would still provide plenty of isolation even if I was running 1500 watts and had a transceiver hooked up to the other input. Now for the final test let's actually take a look at the switch I actually use in my station. I've got a four position alpha delta down here that I switch um, between four different locations. Uh, position one is my Kenwood TS-870. Position two is my old 830. Position three is this little Yesu uh, shortwave receiver. And then position four, I've got coming out to a piece of coax that I keep here on the bench for when I'm testing radios or I want to bring a little portable rig up here or something like that. So let's take a look at the isolation between port one and two between the two HF rigs in my station. Okay, so I have the coax switch set up to put the 870 into the dummy load, and the 830 is switched out of line. So what we're going to we're going to transmit 100 watts out of the 870 on the 40 meter CW portion of the band into the dummy load, and see how much power gets into and read by the S meter on the 830. Now you might say, hey, wait a minute, they're not tuned to the same frequency. That's not fair. Well, the reality is they kind of are. Um, on the 870. The display will always read uh, the signal that you're receiving and the signal that you're transmitting. Uh, and the side tone is generated internally. On the 830, the receiver uh, is always going to show where the, your zero beaded. So in order to hear my CW signal at 7059, I need to be tuned down a little bit so that I can hear the side tone th uh, using the BFO. Okay, so let's uh, key the 870. 100 watts transmitted, and if we can see the S meter here, it's deflecting up to about S9 plus about 25. Let's zoom into that to see that a little bit closer. All right, so we can see about S9 plus 25 from my 100 watt transmitted signal going through the switch through the through path. So as we said, if S9 is minus 73 dBm, and I'm seeing S9 plus 25, um, that means that what we're seeing is uh, minus, 40, minus 48 dBm. So that means I've got about 98 dB of isolation at 7 megahertz on that switch. So certainly more than adequate to keep the unused radio perfectly safe.
So I hope you enjoyed this look at coax switches and how they could be used to switch different rigs to a common antenna system and that it can be done safely. If you liked the video, give me a thumbs up. If you hadn't subscribed to the channel already, please consider doing so. And be sure to ring that bell down in the lower right corner on the YouTube page to get notified when I post a new video. Thanks again as always for watching, and we'll see you next time.